And now we will do a super duper mega trick uh, on this truth table. Remember in some, some of the last videos I said that uh, in real life you not only create truth tables out of statements, but you also create statements out of truth tables. And let's, let's try that. I think that, that's, uh, that should be handy. Actually, it's pretty handy. It's exactly what you do uh, when you design digital hardware. You create uh, uh, out of your mind a truth table, what you expect uh, uh, some piece of hardware to do. And then you create uh, uh, a statement, Boolean algebra statement. That's how you do that. And afterwards you translate that into logic gates. But uh, that's uh, the tutorial some logic gates will follow uh, later. And now we will uh, we will do the backward trick. So as I said before, we did uh, this truth table out of this expression. And now we will try uh, we will try to forget this expression. Yes, and we will try to reproduce this expression out of this truth table. Yes, let's do that. Whoa! How can we start doing that? Let's take, let's take just one expression that equals, uh, uh, equals 1. For example, uh, let's, take, let's take this one. This. Let's, uh, let's, uh, so I repeat, our problem is to, uh, to have in this truth table to get expression that will be valid for this truth table. We know that this expression is but uh, we want to just to, to, to try to do that, to try to do the backwards step. Uh, so, and let's first just, don't, we don't rush into this problem. We just do it step by step. And we scale our problem down. Let's say, uh, screw all other cases, let's just solve this problem for one simple case. Let's make a function that will equal 1 for this kind of input, when a equals to 1, b equals to 0, and c equals also to 0. What kind of function it could be? Well, it's... I think you have some uh, ideas. I do. Uh, what do you think about this function? a multiplied by b negated multiplied by c negated. Uh, this function will equal 1 for these variables. Let's check that. Let's say uh, a equals to 1, then b negated will also equal to 1, c negated it's 0, then negated it will be 1. So this expression will be 1. You see? Whoa! We solved our problem for one line of truth table. We know that this uh, this expression for this expression and this input uh, uh, variables, input values of the, of the three variables, the result is one. So yes, we done already 10% uh, of, our, of our job. And you see that uh, I just uh, wrote this uh, uh, in two words. When you have ones for a certain value, you write the name of the value. When you have uh, zeros, then you write negated value. Uh, that, that's how you get one. That's how you get all the values equal to one. You see? A, we didn't negate it because it's one already. B, we negated B because it was 0 in this case. And C, in the same case, we negated it because it was 0. And we wanted to have 1, yeah? You remember, we really wanted to have 1. And let's do the same for the next one. Uh, we write A because uh, we need the result to be 1, right? And A is already 1. We write it down. But we also have other vari variables. And they shouldn't screw up anything we do, they should follow our imagination. And we imagine that uh, some expression equals to 1 for this variable. Uh, 
then B should be negated because B is zero. Ah, and we want ones. We really want ones in this case. And C, C is okay. C is already one. And we have this thing will equals again one by one by one by one by one and that equals one. So, whoa, we did, we solved uh, our problem for another line. Let's, uh, let's do the same for this one. Uh, it should be A multiplied by B multiplied by C negated. You remember, uh, we want uh, the value, the resulting value to be 1. Yes, that's, that's why we negate 0. Because we want, uh, we, we negate C because we really want it to be 1. So that we will have 1 by 1 by 1. If we don't negate C, then, we get, we, then uh, uh, the, the last one will be 0. And it will screw up the whole thing. And we don't want to uh, have zeros here. We, have, we, we li would like to have 1s. Because we want 1 in the result. Yeah, and last one. Oh, that's, that's all 1s. That's perfect. We just leave A multiplied by B multiplied by C. Because it's, it's, it's 1 in case all of them are 1s. Oh, and we missed another one. We have uh, one here. So we started doing it uh, to solve it for one. We solved it for once. Uh, what? Not much space, but we have a negated because we don't want zero, and we have b multiplied by b multiplied by c. That will equal one. Well, and we have uh, how many? Five, five small functions. I will just erase this one, this trash. We, we already have five functions and we solved this problem for five lines out of eight. Yeah, but what do we do with zeros? Let's say, screw zeros. We, we want our resulting functions function to equal one for this case is down here and in, we want our function to equal zero in these cases. So if we create such a function that will output one for these cases and output zero for any other cases, then then we are done. We just we shouldn't look uh, we shouldn't we shouldn't look into this. We just can't forget about them. We just should make sure that if none of these guys is is one then the results should be zero and now how how can we do that pretty easy uh, we need to have them in scope let's let's write next so how we incorporate these six uh, small functions into one so imagine we have some variable x that equals some some uh, let's say some product product one product of some variables and plus product of some variables some other variables or the same variables in another way and in another oh you can think of these products of just of simple variables they they are actually and imagine if if uh, p1 this variable or function or product uh, equals to 1, then no matter what are p2 and p3, no matter what they are, x will equal 1. Because we remember that some variable plus 1 always equal 1. And uh, let's imagine that, uh, no, this equals to 0. Yeah? But then if any other variable equals 1, then again the whole thing will, be, will equal 1. That's, that's how we can incorporate these small functions into one uh, big function. So let, let's, uh, uh, let's say if we sum up all these small products, then the result will always equal 1 if any of these 5 equals to 1. If all of them equal to 0, then we'll get output zero. Yeah. 
let's let's write it down let's write down what we just came up with 